welcome to episode 31 of Little Big Knits. This is a podcast about knitting and my name is Selma. I'm your host. I'm also known as Selma Knits on Ravelry and Instagram. I'm coming to you from Ottawa, Canada, where I live with my husband, our two children and our cat Yoda. I think she's outside on this dreary day, um, but she does exist. I swear she does. <laughs> she just has been on the podcast for a little while. So welcome. Um, there have been quite a few subscribers, so a special hello to you and a welcome back to everybody who's been around for a little while. I really appreciate your presence and I especially appreciate all the comments and participation of the group. So thank you very much. So just a reminder that we have a Ravelry group called Little Big Knits. There you can find the show notes, although I haven't been very good at putting them or completing them these days, but they are there. Um, you can also introduce yourself if you like. And we have the a Garment Galore Cal going on right now. It started on January 1st of this year and it will be ending on December 31st. I'm co-hosting this with Kate of the Hawthorne Cottage Craft podcast and so you can go into either of our groups actually and there are chatter threads and uh, finished object threads and so you can look into that if you like thank you to everybody who has been participating we've got over over 600 uh, finished objects which is pretty amazing and so many inspiring projects really I keep uh, adding to my queue all the time and it's amazing seeing the color combinations that people come up with and uh, the ideas that people come up with it's really great to see so thank you so much to those of you who have participated in that this year I hope you've enjoyed it we've still got a couple of months left this goes until December 31st so if you want to join in, it is absolutely not too late. You simply have to be um, joining in with a adult knitted garment of any kind. So anything that's a garment, not an accessory. Uh, so a shawl does not work, um, but a cardigan, a top, skirt, um, vest, sweaters of any kind, dresses, anything like that uh, is totally acceptable. So if you're so inclined, please go and check out the group. You can still join in. It's not too late if you are, if you're interested in joining in. There have been quite a few first time sweater people. So I'm so encouraged to see people making sweaters, hoping that you see that it's not really that hard. Um, sometimes there are bumps along the way, but uh, I really enjoy knitting sweaters, as you can tell if you've been following me for a while. So um, yeah, it was great to host the Garment Calore Cal this year. So yeah, so that's what you can find in the group if you happen to get yourself over there. So I am coming to you actually on the Canadian Thanksgiving weekend, although this probably won't go up during the weekend because I just don't really have that much time. Um, it's the Monday today and we were in Montreal for a couple of days. And I'll tell you a little bit more about that at the end of the podcast. Um, I usually have my introduction a montage figured out by the time I uh, film, but I don't this time. So I have no idea what you saw, but um, I will have explained it. It was either fall scenes or scenes from the Wakefield Market or scenes from Montreal. One of those three. Let's see which one it was. <laughs> I won't know till later. Um, I wanted to be able to podcast uh, because I won't have that much time in the next little while and I'll tell you more about that. And I wanted to get a podcast in before, before it got too long as well. So I'm podcast today on the Monday of Thanksgiving weekend. So I hope you enjoyed it if you had, if you celebrated Canadian Thanksgiving. And, um, but this will probably go up on Tuesday or Wednesday, something like that. It's a dreary day this morning. It's supposed to clear up for this afternoon. Um, as a result, I've got my studio lights here helping me out and hopefully uh, they're doing a good job. <laughs> And we are really now into the fall season. The colors are changing. It's absolutely a beautiful, we've had beautiful fall weather so far. It's been around 17 degrees Celsius and a lot of sun. It's just been wonderful. Um, I've got myself a little glass pumpkin there that I, I bought recently that I really enjoy, but I'm also drinking my tea today out of this fabulous mug that my friend Amelia gave me. Um, she sent to me from the States. It's this wonderful pumpkin mug. Thank you so much, Amelia. 
Now I'm going to have to ask Amelia who the potter is because I do not recall and I don't, I couldn't find the little piece of paper that came with it. Uh, but I'll put it in the down bar so that you can see it in case you're interested. I know this potter does a limited edition, edition um, uh, number of mugs every year for this particular design that she has, but it's really quite fabulous and very fitting for this time of the year. So cheers. I hope you will grab yourself a cup of something or a glass of something and sit back and enjoy while I'll tell you a little bit about my knits this time. But before I do that, one little thing. I made a boo-boo last time. I said we were close to 6,000 view, uh, 6, subscribers in the group. Well, I was a wee bit off because it was actually 5,599. So that would be 5,600 next, and somehow in my head it just went to 6,000. So I was a little bit ahead of myself, <laughs> but uh, we will get there soon, I suspect. And um, we've had a, a couple of hundred um, new uh, subscribers this time, so that's why I said a special hello, because there were quite a few of you. So if we get to 6,000 next time, there will be a prize. All right, let's move on to knitting. Just to let you know, I'm wearing the Farallon today. This was the cardigan that I showed you last time, but I wasn't wearing it. Um, so I thought I would uh, wear it today uh, for a moment because I'm gonna be uh, putting, having a little bit of a costume change at one point or a wardrobe change, I should say. This is the cardigan that I knit out of Katia Linen, which is a cotton linen blend um, in this sort of heathered gray colorway. And this is a design by Elizabeth Doherty. Uh, I already told you last time that I was enjoying it and wearing it a lot and I just wanted you to have a chance to see what it looks like on. Um, it's just a really nice everyday cardigan. It's got this drop shoulder look, which I'm going to tell you a little bit about in a moment. I'm noticing my other sweater is rolling, which I'll be telling you about as well. Um, it's got a, the, the drop shoulder thing happening here with short row shaping, which I just find really sits nicely. And it just goes... Oops, like that with a split hem here. And uh, it's just a very, very easy to wear cardigan and I've been really, really enjoying it a lot. So I thought I would just put it on. Um, I just find it's, it's, it's just the kind of cardigan that you can just put over and it's cotton linen and even though the weather is changing, it's warm in the house, um, I find that I have still been able to wear it although it pro its season will come to an end fairly soon. So this is what I'm wearing, but underneath I have a finished object for you. I believe, had I actually finished the knitting? I'm, I'm not remembering now. Jeez. Um, this is the, had I finished it? No, I think it was still a work in progress. This is the Edie. I showed it to you guys last time. I think I was just on one of the sleeves and I was a little bit concerned about rolling. You'll recall that I showed you the bottom hem if you were here last time and um, it was rolling a lot and I was quite nervous about it. And I also felt that the sleeves were flaring. So I actually went back and undid the finishing and I redid what the pattern suggested, which is a, essentially a row of pearls and then a bind off. Um, but I did it with a smaller size needle and that was actually a great thing to do because it really had, I mean, there's still a tiny bit of flaring, but overall it just kind of sits more nicely now. And then I was very concerned about the bottom. So I actually undid the bottom again and did the same thing on a smaller needle. Needle. It is still curling, which I'll show you in a moment, but not quite as badly. And I have to say, I keep meaning to steam block it. I think that'll have a huge impact, but I just haven't done it because it's not curling enough to bother me that much. And I tend to wear this under something. You can see that there's still a little bit of curling, but it's not a huge disaster as I thought it was going to be. And as you can see, there is the side, side part, which is kind of similar to the Farallon. But there you go. It's just a very, very simple, lovely fitting top. It took two skeins, less than, well, I think it took about 800 yards. So it would take about two skeins uh, for somebody about my size, a little less if you were smaller and a little more perhaps if you were larger than me. But 
about that it is uh, just a really nicely fitting top. Um, I, I could see another one in my future. Um, it's got a nice V on it. I did do the finishing that was suggested in the pattern where you picked up um, and did uh, similar to what you did on the sleeves and the, on the bottom. Uh, you had the option of leaving it um, raw because there's a slip stitch edge or you could pick up and do that. And so I did that. <laughs> I just had to check. Did I actually do that? I did. I did. And um, yeah, it's just a really, really lovely, lovely little top. I knit this out of the Fiber Company Meadow in the color Bergamot. And I think I used a 3.25 or a 3.5 millimeter needle, I don't quite recall, to get gauge for the sweat for the pattern. And um, it's just easy peasy lemon squeezy. So before I continue, thank you to everybody who gave me comments about things that uh, they have done to fix the bottoms uh, and the edges. Uh, I really appreciated seeing those. And then I opted to do, to do this in a smaller, uh, smaller needle and I thought we'll see what happens. So thank you again for all the lovely comments and the, and the suggestions for that. I really appreciate it. So what's next? The next finished object that I have is another gray cardigan because you know I was in the middle of knitting this cardigan which is the Evening Dew by Ririko and it's finished and blocked. The only thing I have to do is this one end that I didn't um, I didn't put in. I decided to block it before I did that last end just in case I felt it was not long enough or too long or something. So this is I have to say, I feel like I'm wearing something super luxurious. This is a cardigan that I started in the spring, but I put it aside for uh, the summer because I wanted to work on summer garments. And I took it up uh, again recently because I wanted to finish it before moving on to anything else. This is a design by Ririko, as I said. I knit it out of Persimmon Tree Yarns, which is a 100% alpaca yarn that I got at Rhinebeck. I've used it before. I made a vest by Elizabeth Smith, you may recall, uh, I think um, two years ago now. And um, I absolutely love, love, love this yarn. Um, you never know. I might end up buying more the next time I go to Rhinebeck. <laughs> But I do feel like uh, this could end up being my desert island yarn, although chances are if I were on a desert island it would be quite warm and I wouldn't want to wear alpaca. But um, it's, it's such a beautiful yarn. I think if you're super sensitive you might find this a little bit scratchy. Um, I don't. I just find it luxurious. It's very warm. Uh, so we'll see if I'm able to wear this for the whole podcast. The whole body of this has these uh, cables, which end up having kind of a lacy look. As I said, it's got short row shaping and it's got a drop shoulder look. Um, and then longer sleeves, which I ended up making a little bit longer than I expected, but I'm actually quite okay with that because this is meant to be sort of a cozy, um, cozy cardigan. It's a boxy fit that is slightly cropped. So I'm not gonna be able to give you the full, full look of it, but that is essentially it. I'm really, really happy with the length of it, actually. Um, I contemplated making it longer, but I thought, you know what? I think I like the, the sort of cropped look of it. So I'm very happy with this, and I have a feeling that like the Farallon, this is going to be one of those things that I put on with this sweater and a pair of pants perhaps and uh, where to work even or on the weekends it's just really really nice so this is the second drop shoulder cardigan that i've made i gotta say i don't love how the cardigans meet the stocking at sleeve i find like it causes this little bit of puffiness on it um, and I tried when I blocked it to flatten that out, but it just it seems to be naturally doing that So I'm not a hundred percent thrilled with that um, But I think it's gonna be you know, it's gonna be fine when I'm actually wearing it um, and I'm not I think I like the look of a of a drop so shoulder look it is definitely a more casual look which is fine 
Um, but I do find that it, it, uh, it adds a bit of bulk to this area. So if you're a person who is very sensitive about that, you might want to consider that. Um, I do think that I've got sort of biggish arms and I feel like it accentuates it a little bit, but I'm not particularly bothered. I do also find that it gives a very nice look here. Like it just has a really nice, simple finishing to this cardigan. And same with the Farallon. Um, with the drop shoulder, having it open is, is a really nice detail. And this is finished with an I-cord edging here, which I wasn't sure I was going to like, but when I finished it, I was very, very happy with it, and I think it gives it a nice feeling. So I'm not quite sure what else to tell you about this. I think I knit it on 3.75 millimeter needles. It's super fuzzy. Can you see the fuzz? And soft and wonderful. And I'm going to enjoy it, I hope. So I think that's about what I can tell you about it. It was tedious. That's one other thing I can tell you about it. Um, I, if you know me, I'm not a huge fan of doing cables. I just find them tedious. And so that's why I call this knit tedious. If you love doing cables, you will really, really enjoy this. You will not have an issue with it. But it's all over cables. There are cables on every right side row. And uh, so it felt like it was never going to end, but it did. And um, at the end, it was great and great to have. And it's not that, it just, I find that tedious and a bit, it slows me down, of course. Um, but they're not difficult to do, really. And I didn't use a cable needle. I, I almost never do, unless they're big cables. But with these ones, uh, it was very easy to do. And they give this kind of uh, tree-like look. So I recommend this pattern, especially if you're looking for a slightly oversized or you can make it even more oversized I made mine I think I used a small I, I made a smaller size than I should have because I didn't want it to be too too oversized but I think that it's got enough you know it's got enough of a a give to have that sort of oversized relaxed look um, but a very nice pattern it's well written and um, it's something that you could make using probably you could use uh you know a single strand of fingering weight with some uh, lace weight mohair as well if you wanted to i think in fact that's what the original design is made in i decided to use this alpaca which i felt would have a similar outcome and it and it did so there you go those are the two finished objects for this week so what am i working on now Let me see. One thing I am working on, which is in this really lovely bag by Jenna Rose. Jenna Rose is a local uh, screen printer bag maker um, who's, I've got, I've got another bag of hers. I think I've got one other bag of hers that I've used a lot. It's a very similar size. And when I saw this one, I just had to have it got the beautiful hummingbird on it and it's just stunning fabric I think it's a, a linen or a linen blend her bags are really well made she always uses a similar kind of um, sort of bulkier zipper with a little leather pull and just a simple canvas interior I really really enjoy her bags and she's here in Wakefield so I had some leftover Katya yarn from the Farallon as well as from the Calyx which I had made before I had this um, oatmeal color that I had used for the Calyx by Elizabeth Doherty, and I decided to make myself, oh, and of course I'm mid-row, I decided to make, well not myself, I decided to make our house, <laughs> a tea towel. So I'm in the process of knitting a tea towel, um, which I started on the diagonal um, and increased until I had the right width that I wanted, the right width, the width that I wanted really. And I'm just going down and I'm about to start the decreases for the, the towel. But of course I ended up mid-row. And uh, I used, I have two markers here to mark the right side. One is because it was 
It was lent to me by Sue. We were knitting at work and I realized that I didn't know which was the right side so she lent that to me and I have to give that back to her. But I also wanted to make sure to have this one on here which is this wonderful Moomin progress keeper that my friend Marta of Martushka Yarns sent to me. She had gotten a gift from somebody and when I commented on it she, she was able to snag one for me uh, um, and send it to me. Actually two of them. So one of them might end up in a a, a package of some sort for somebody at some point but this is Moomin with the uh, finish flag so I just love looking at that every day so um, this has been super easy it was a nice little palette cleanser after making this cardigan and I wasn't quite ready for my next knit so I decided I'll knit on this tea towel and um, and get that going I'm really, really looking forward to having this. It's because it's a cotton linen blend, I think it'll be a nice, nice towel to have in the bathroom. We actually have um, at the moment a, well, not at the very moment, right now it's in the linen closet because I washed it recently, but we have a hand woven linen towel that my great aunt made. And I absolutely love having it in the bathroom as a hand towel so I decided that I wanted to see what it would be like to have a hand knit one as opposed to a hand woven one so um, I took a, a wee break there because um, Yoda wanted to come in and then I thought I would go and grab this tea towel or this hand towel for you to show you because I'm quite amazed by this towel it was in my mother's house my mother was using it this towel is at least 50 years old, um, actually definitely 50 years old, because it was made by a great aunt who actually I think died before I even was born. So that makes this at least, you know, 50 something. And uh, I don't know if she was still weaving in her final years. So it's just a very simple woven towel that has this kind of, um, square motif on it and the reason I know that it was made by my great aunt and which great aunt because can you see that it's got two M's on it so people tended to embroider uh, their works generally their the tea towels or, or hand towels that they made they embroider them and, and that is the initials of that great aunt uh, in my grandmother's family, there were 14 kids, and I believe she was the oldest, um, oldest of them. So, so this has been around for a long time. I suspect there were some years that it wasn't being used, um, but here it is now. So Yoda has come into the house. She's about to settle on the sofa next to me, but maybe she wants to come and say hi. No, she doesn't want to come. So that's my first whip. Um, my second one, which is in this bag by Paradise Island. And last time I wasn't able to show you the Stash Appreciation Society, which is a pin that uh, Lou Lee, Lee Christensen um, has created and sells, I believe in her Etsy shop, along with her um, needle cases and bags. I showed you last time she had given me one. So in this bag, I have a colleague who is about to become a grandmother for the first time. And uh, so I thought I would make at least one thing for her. And I decided to start with this little hat. Um, this pattern called the Tegan Baby Hat with Top Knot by Julie Taylor. And um, I wanted to be able to use stash yarn. So I happened to find uh, this uh, baby alpaca silk in my stash and this requires a DK yarn so I decided to double strand this and I'm just at the I'm just about to start the decreases and I'm gonna have to change the yarn but um, this is the hat that is going to go to that little baby I just love the color and my colleague wears a lot of this type of gray so I thought this was perfect uh, for her to have for her grandchild as the grandmother so uh, it's really got a beautiful feel very silky and soft 
so I'm hoping that it'll be a good hat for uh, a baby. This is the uh, three to six month size, I believe. Uh, or no, this is the newborn size, but I suspect that mine is a little bit bigger um, because I suspect that my gauge is a little bit uh, uh, a larger gauge than is expected because I'm using two finger weight and, and a good finger weight uh, strands of the yarn, but I don't know. My feeling is just that it's a little bit bigger. This looks like it's a little bigger than a newborn a newborn hat to me, but uh, I think it'll still be used within the first few months of the baby's the baby's life here on Earth, <laughs> and not in the belly. So that is the second thing that I'm knitting. It's being knit on millim on four millimeter needles, and uh, there. So I hope to finish that off this week. And uh, we were talking about maybe having a little shower or something at work. So I thought I would be able to give that to her then. And then the last thing that I'm knitting, I spoke to you about last time I podcasted. It's actually from this book, which has tape on it because I got it from the library. And it's when you order books at the library, you end up going to pick them up on a shelf. And they have a little sticker on there with the first four, the first four letters of your last name. <laughs> so, um, so this is a book by Pam Allen. Yes, Pam Allen called Home. And I've taken this out of the library multiple times. Um, so I keep thinking I should buy it. However, uh, I haven't looked very hard for it, but on Amazon, they didn't seem to have it. So I should really check on Chapters Indigo to see if they have it. But uh, in here is an article, an article, is a cardigan called the Edith. And there are many, many, many lovely articles, uh, lovely patterns, I should say. <laughs> I was a little bit suspicious that it might be a funny podcast today. <laughs> Sorry. I think I'm a little tired from all our partying in Montreal. So anyway, this is the cardigan that um, I wanted to make. Now, I got to tell you that I'm not making this exactly. I will make this full cardigan at some point. I love it. And I actually have some sort of oatmeal yarn that I would like to make it in. But I was looking for something to make with this orange yarn that I showed you last time. This skein is a horrible, horrible skein, this crazy bright orange. It is, it is just about that bright um, that I had gotten from Americo. It's the, uh, which is right there. This is the Baby Surrey, which is an 80 Surrey and 20 wool blend. Americo, unfortunately, has decided to close, uh, she has decided to close her doors uh, because of family, family issues. Uh, so there's a huge sale happening right now if you happen to get there for um, for some of her yarns, the ones that are left. I don't think there's any of the Surrey left. So I wanted to make um, sort of a little bit of this type of a thing where it's an oversized uh, layering piece. Not necessarily an actual cardigan. And I was looking at different options. I told you last time there was the pattern that actually came with the yarn, which was called the Seta Kanai. Um, and I decided against it, uh, partly because I, there just were no finished objects and I was a little bit concerned about how it would look. So I thought and thought and thought and decided that I would make the Edith cardigan, but as a vest. And I decided that I would make it probably shorter than the cardigan, although I'm, I'm, I've decided that I'll make that decision as I go along. The Edith is a bottom-up cardigan, and in order to be able to make that decision of length as I go along, I thought I probably should make it as a top-down. So I studied the pattern <laughs> and decided to, uh, to completely reverse it and start uh, going top down. I've made this one and the Farallon, um, they're very similar in construction, so I thought I can do this no problem. So that is what I'm doing. I've started going down the back, and funnily enough, this pattern has a similar mistake rib 
that the Satakanai did. It's just that the Satakanai had it, I think that's what it was called, had it all over and this only has it part way down the back and along the lapels in the front. So I pretty much actually have finished uh, the, uh, the portion of the back and now I'll have to pick up for the front and, and knit down. I have to measure this, but I think I'm just about there so that I'll join the front portions, knit the right, knit the left before joining under the sleeves and continuing with the body. And then I can decide how long I want it to be depending on, on how wide it is and so forth. And rather than turn this into a cardigan like this, I've decided that I'm just going to do a ribbing here and have it as sort of an open vest type thing to wear in the fall. And I have a couple of blouses I think it would look really, really nice with and a pair of um, jeans or dress pants for work. And so that's what I've resolved to do. And um, I'll definitely have enough yarn to make it as long as I want to make it. And, um, and I'll make it uh, as a short sleeve layering piece. And so that is what I'm going to do with this. I'm knitting this on four millimeter needles and the gauge is absolutely wonderful and it's just a stunning feeling yarn. I have a thing for the butteriness of alpaca, I have to say. I really, really, really love it. This creates a very stretchy fabric. Um, so I have to now study how, where I'm supposed to add on the, the front portion. So. I'll be back with that at some point. Now this is being housed in a stunning new bag by Harrington Bags. She makes these wonderful um, sort of square top bags. It's a drawstring. It opens up like that. It can house a full sweater like I've got two two skeins in there and uh, and it's got a little wee pocket where I've got the labels and it's just a beautiful bag and I she has this which is her, her Outlander series um, on <laughs> I had just finished watching or I just finished watching I should say I hadn't I just finished watching uh, the fourth season of Outlander it finally came onto Netflix and um, I finished this while watching it and the tea towel has been worked on and uh, as well as the hat. This I actually started on Friday, this uh, cardigan, so I didn't watch Outlander while knitting on this. But I love this fabric, it's so beautiful. And so I decided to, to purchase um, this bag and I've been admiring her bags for so long that I really wanted to see what it would be like and what's great about it is when it's not in use it just folds up and turns into a nice little package. It's a really great size, really nicely made. So she is located somewhere not very far, somewhere between here and Montreal, I believe. Um, I could be wrong, I cannot remember, uh, but it's called Harrington. I think she lives in Harrington, wherever Harrington is. <laughs> Her name is uh, Claudia Mau, who who makes these bags. So there you go. Those are my three works in progress. So just a wee word on what is coming up for me. You may recall this super duper fluffy yarn. Uh, what was it called? That was the Poppies by Poppies Pom Pom. And this was called Poppy DeVille. This was the 80% Samoyed yarn and 20% Merino. It's like supremely fluffy, ultra light. So I decided that I wanted to make a hat with this. However, I was a little concerned that I wouldn't have enough yardage for it because this has 125 yards only. It's meant to be a DK. However, I've heard from uh, my friend Holly who just finished a hat. She had two skeins and she used only part of the first one, or the second one I should say. However, I was still a little nervous uh, that I might not have enough to make a slouchy hat. And I don't really like beanies. I prefer something a little bit slouchy. So I was looking around and I happened upon this new pattern by Natasha Sills called My Favorite Weekend Hat. It's very difficult to see what is happening there. 
but this is essentially a um, it's a slip stitch pattern and depending on and meant for two colors and depending on which color you put in front you can end up with very different looks so I thought this would be a neat hat to make using this with another yarn now I wouldn't want to lose the sort of ethereal quality of this and this kind of like you know cloud like quality of it so I decided to pair it with this Emily yarn by Ilimani which is I think it is a uh, 56 mulberry silk and 40% alpaca and 4% merino it is as light as air and I happen to have three skeins of this pink so I which is coming across as a little bit more blue with the lights that I have here today there you go um, I've decided to pair it with that and it'll just have a super cupcake look to it and I have two more skeins of this pink and I thought I would make the is it called the getting warmer or getting colder cowl by Espace Tricot I'll put the name down here because I suddenly am not remembering it I had made it in a purple color and I thought if I have a hat on my head and this down here could be a cute little combination for the winter and I got this uh, yarn um, from somebody who was de-stashing and I wanted to be able to use it up so there you go that is what's coming up soon and I've also inherited a work in progress from my friend Antoine um, Antoine is uh, is a friend who is married to a very long time friend of mine, Paul. And uh, we went to their wedding about five years ago. They got married in France because Antoine is from France. And Antoine learned to knit a couple of years ago and has really been enjoying knitting. He started these socks for Paul out of, I'm not quite sure what yarn this is. I think it's opal or something of that nature that is creating these kind of variegated stripes but he was struggling to knit. This is causing him pain in his hands. Um, as you can see, he's knitting two at a time. I will not be doing that. Um, so he was, he was saying that it was causing him a lot of uh, carpal tunnel pain, that he prefers to knit with a larger needles and, larger and, a, and a thicker yarn. So I have taken this over and I'll finish these socks for Paul. It's been a bit of a running joke that um, I made Antoine a pair of socks. Uh, about three years ago and I somehow have never managed to make Paul a pair of socks so at least Paul will now finally get a pair of socks and so I'm hoping to finish these uh, perhaps I'll take them with me on my upcoming trip that I'll tell you about and and finish them there so those are the couple of future knits that are coming up I mentioned to you earlier uh, the Wakefield Market. So Wakefield is a town about 40 minutes outside of Ottawa on the Quebec side. It's a beautiful, beautiful little town on, on the Gatineau River. It's just a lovely, lovely place and we've been going there for years. Um, it's a nice place to just go and spend the day. There used to actually be a steam train that would go, but uh, the steam train has since stopped functioning they have a, a farmer's market on Saturday mornings and so uh, Holly and I went one Saturday morning because they were having a wool day and so we went it was lovely there are lots of nice um, different stalls mostly of food and things like that but then there were about six stalls uh, selling uh, yarn or woven goods there was the grannies of Wakefield who were selling already made items probably for charity um, and Roots and Rain and Riverside Studios happened to be there uh, so I ended up um, getting two skeins one from Roots and Rain and one from Riverside Studios so I got this this is the second time I bought from Roots and Rain and it's the second time that I bought a dusty pink uh, there's something happening with Selma and Dusty Pink right now. So this is actually dyed. She is a local here in Ottawa uh, hand dyer who dyes with natural ingredients. So this is a red onion lac and matter combination. And I just really, really loved the beigey pinkness of it. It is a 100% BFL, British Blue Face Lester. 
and um, it's just got a really wooly, wooly feeling to it. Um, and so I'm feeling that that is going to be going into a shawl. And then when I was at the Riverside Studios uh, stall, I could not help myself but buy this one-of-a-kind skein. I've been wanting to make myself some darker socks. Um, and although this goes against what I told you guys last time of knitting only with natural uh, or different fibers that might be warmer than a superwash. This is a, an MCN, so it's a superwash merino cashmere nylon blend. I just fell in love with the colors in this. Let's see if you can see that. So it is a brown, but there is a purpleness going through it as well. And I just love the purpleness, but I also love the brown. And it just, I thought this would make a beautiful darker pair of socks. So I'm itching to cast this on, although I'm also really wanting to cast on with the natural yarns that I have. So we'll see what ends up happening. I should just do what I feel like doing, right? So we'll see what ends up, what ends up being what I feel like doing. So I ended up getting those two lovelies at the Wakefield Market. So that is the end of the knitting content of the podcast. I thought I would just tell you a little bit about what is coming up and perhaps tell you a little bit about um, the books that I'm reading uh, before we finish off today. So I will not be going to Rhinebeck, which is next weekend. This is uh, the first year. I went four years in a row, so this would have been my fifth year but I am not going to Rhinebeck. Um, I do hope that if you happen to be going to Rhinebeck that you will enjoy yourselves there. And I do hope if you go to Rhinebeck that you will enjoy an apple cider donut on me, or for me, I should say. <laughs> um, yeah, it was uh, a decision made primarily because the week after Rhinebeck, I am going to Ireland. I'm leaving on the 30th of October and I'll be going to the Ellen Retreat, which is being hosted by Kate of Hawthorne Cottage Crab Podcast and Emma of Woolly Fibers, Woolly Mammoth Fibers, I should say. They're hosting a retreat together and I'm going to that and then Kate and I will be spending uh, the following week um, doing a little bit of touring around. We're going up to the Donegal region, which I'm very much looking forward to. We've got an Air Airbnb up there and uh, we'll be visiting a little bit around Belfast. I'm flying into Belfast and out of Belfast. And actually, I'm realizing now that I was supposed to give you some information. If you happen to be living in the Belfast area, we were going to go out on Monday, the 4th, of November, whatever the Monday night is, we are going to be going out for a knit night. Um, and if you'd like to join, you're absolutely welcome to join. I'll put the name of the pub in the down bar because right now I'm not remembering it. But we'll be meeting there uh, at some point Monday evening. I can't even tell you what time, but I think what I'll do is post it on Instagram. So if you are in the Belfast area or in around that area and you'd like to join me and Kate and some others for in at night feel free to join us on that Monday night and what I'll do is I'll post it on Instagram with the actual name of the pub where we'll be and the time I'm assuming it's probably going to be somewhere around six or seven o'clock so um, so yeah hope to see you there if you happen to be in the area it'd be lovely to meet you so that will be happening. And then I also wanted to announce one little thing. Um, you may have heard of Knit City Vancouver. It just happened uh, a couple of weekends ago. Uh, it's a nice knitting festival that happens in Vancouver a couple of weeks before Rhinebeck. Well, Knit City is going to be having a Montreal edition in March. I think it's around the third week of March in 2020, Knit City will be in Montreal. I am extremely excited. I think it's going to be a fabulous event. We don't really have a large knitting event in this area and it's about time. We have a lot of small ones. There's Twist, which is the largest one and it happens in August and it's in, it's in sort of around an hour and a bit into the countryside from here. But in terms of the urban areas, um, Ottawa doesn't have one and neither does Montreal. So I'm really excited that uh, Knit City is coming to Montreal. So put that in your calendars if uh, you happen to be in the area or it's a bit of a road trip for you. I think it's gonna be really exciting. 
and I wanted to mention it so that you'd know. So in terms of what's been going on uh, around here lately, in terms of reading, I finished A Man Called Uwe, uh, which is by Friedrich Bachmann, and I'm hoping to see the movie soon. And it was a nice palate cleanser after reading a rather heavy book. It was a really nice book to read uh, or listen to because I listened to it and it was extremely well read. I really enjoyed it. And um, it's a light story about a grumpy old man who ends up befriending uh, a rather uh, funny group of people and um, who just seem to gravitate towards him despite his grumpiness. And uh, uh, it was a really enjoyable book. Um, it's a comedy, essentially, uh, and I had to keep that in mind because I found some of the characterizations of people a little bit stereotypical, and I tried not to get offended by that, but it is meant to be a comedy, and um, and it was really enjoyable. I really loved the way uh, the story ended, and it was just, it was really, really fun, and I think I'm looking forward to watching the movie. Uh, I might end up watching that with my family. So I recommend that if you're looking for um, a story that is light and touching and funny at the same time. It made me think a little bit of um, Eleanor Oliphant is Completely Fine, which I had read earlier in the summer as well about, you know, a bit of a, um, a bit of a grumpy, although she wasn't quite grumpy, but she came across as grumpy, judgmental person uh, who's got some social awkwardness to them. And this was the male version and, uh, and it was really enjoyable. Somebody is walking around feeling a little restless. Do you want to come say hi? No, she's just going to destroy the carpet instead. So that's what I read, and I have since started a book by Chimananda uh, Ngoche Adiche, who is a Nigerian writer. <clears throat> Sorry. She has written a couple of other books, um, Half a Yellow Sun and uh, Purple Hibiscus. I read Purple Hibiscus a few years ago and very, very much enjoyed it. Passed it on to a colleague who also really enjoyed it. And she came out with, I think it's been at least two, three years, perhaps 2016, a book called Americana. And I've just started that. And it is about a um, Nigerian woman who is an immigrant in uh, the United States. And I can't really say a whole lot more yet because I've only listened to one hour and I think it's a 17 hour book. But so far, I'm really, really enjoying it. I think it's uh, so far really well written and engaging. And I kept thinking, oh, this is a long book. Um, am I going to be really struggling to get engaged? And from the get go, it's been uh, very engaging. So I'm looking forward to reading that. And I think that's just about what I have been reading. I also watched the uh, movie of the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society which was fun. Um, I really enjoyed the clothes in that uh, movie uh, because it takes place on Guernsey. There are a lot of knitted items and I found myself taking pictures of the screen. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, clearly I've been talking long enough. Um, it was, uh, as most movie makes of books, I felt like sometimes, you know, when you watch a movie, you always think it's not as good as the book. And often, in order to make a movie work, they end up leaving out details that you feel, as a reader, were really important, um, but they don't necessarily work for a movie or they're not necessary for a movie for it to, to uh, be within a certain time limit. And So um, I felt like they left out some key, key aspects of the book, uh, but it was still an enjoyable, it was still an enjoyable movie. And um, as I said, I especially really enjoyed all the knits in it. So it was fun. I also watched uh, Rebecca by Hitchcock. Uh, finally, I had read the book earlier in the, I think in the spring. And um, I had showed you guys the DVD that my father had made of the movie. And so I finally watched that one evening. And um, I really enjoyed that. I thought that was uh, really, really well done actually. Um, staying true to the book and capturing the essence, the, the nature, the sort of haunted nature of the book. Uh, I thought it was really well done, really enjoyed it a lot. 
it was made soon after the book came out and I believe uh, won Oscars for it. Anyway, those are all little details. I think it was made in 1940, something like that. Really enjoyed it. It was very well done. I might have to watch that one again. And so I think that's about it. I hope that the uh, fall continues to be as pleasant. The Some trees have been turning very quickly and others not. The colors of this year seem to have been absolutely beautiful. And um, I'll be, I will have or will be sharing some of those with you. And uh, there have been lots of walks which have been nice and hopefully we'll continue to have some nice weather. We've had a very um, sunny fall so far, so we'll see which way that goes. And I'll be missing, I'll be away for about 10 days uh, for my trip to Ireland. So look forward to footage of that when I get back. And of course I'll be posting on Instagram while I'm there, a little bit here and there. I am very, very much looking forward to this, I have to say. It'll, it'll be the, the trip of the year, um, for sure. And, um, and so that's really about it. Uh, we didn't have a very uh, Thanksgiving eat weekend. We went to Montreal Saturday morning and came back yesterday evening. And we went to see a friend who had a pottery show going on and other friends to have dinner with them. And we had an incredible feast. Um, and then we stayed in a fun hotel with a heated pool. And so I went for a lovely swim Sunday morning. Then we went out for brunch and um, Alejandro and Yaro were doing this wind tunnel thing, which is kind of a um, skydiving simulation. And while they did that, Isla and I went to a nearby shopping mall and hung out, walked around a little bit and uh, had something to drink and chatted. And, um, and today we're gonna go out for dinner, I hope if we're able to find a restaurant, but I won't be cooking this weekend. No cooking for me. <laughs> By the way, speaking of food, I will be starting a fall winter thread uh, for food uh, in the group in case you happen to want to share any fall or winter goodness. And um, I'll be sharing some things in there as well. So I think that brings us to the end of today's podcast. I hope this has found you well. I hope you have enjoyed some crafting time and something to drink um, while I've babbled on about knitting. It's always a pleasure. I absolutely always look forward to podcasting and hopefully uh, I've been able to discuss things in a not too discombobulated way. We'll see you next time. It'll definitely be sometime in November probably mid-November as I'll be getting back on the 9th of November from Ireland and will we'll require a little bit of time to uh, recuperate from the travels and all that. So we'll talk to you at some point in November. Cheers. Take care. Bye-bye.